Good day everyone, welcome to another edition of the Complete Sports Updates. My name is Abib Kuranga. This is the show where we bring to you the latest and trending stories in the world of sports. The Super Falcons of Ninja are set to battle against the Bayana Bayana of South Africa in the final qualification round of the 2024 Olympics in Paris. Rivers United defeated USM Oja in the first leg of the CAF Confederation's core quarter finals. Arsenal held Manchester City to a goalless draw to hand Liverpool a major advantage in the Premier League title race. These are some of the stories which I'll be taking a look at right here. Do sit back, relax and enjoy because this is the Complete Sports Updates. For today's episode, I'm being joined alongside Adebo Yamoso and together we shall be taking you through the rounds as far as the sporting stories in today's episode is concerned. Uh, welcome back to the show, uh, Boy. It's nice to have you back once more. Yeah, good to be back on the show once again. Yes, sir. Uh, without any further ado, you know, on Friday, the match, uh, the final qualification round, the first leg, actually, you know, Nigeria, the Super Falcons of Nigeria will be playing host to South Africa in Abuja and all news have been pointing out to the you know the injury situation of Nigeria with uh, Ashley Prontry you know currently out injured and will definitely miss the game with also South African side you know welcoming back some experienced uh, players how do you think the game is going to pan out on uh, Friday in Abuja? Well I think uh, it's going to be a 50-50 affair in my own opinion, because if you look at uh, recent encounters between South Africa and Nigeria, uh, you can't really pinpoint uh, fine South Africa have won like the last three meetings between the two teams, but it, it has always been a tight affair between the, the two teams. Uh, the Super Falcons, uh, for me, the major worry around the world we're facing is the defense. But you have like three uh, of his uh, experienced uh, players out injured. You talk about Ashley, you talk about Ulu Atos in the main, mm-hmm. and Rafael Atimuron, who were not even in the squad. So, well, what we play to the advantage of the team is the versatility of some of the players in the team. You have someone mm-hmm. like Christy Ushibe, who can also play, she's a midfielder, who can also play as a centre back. Mm-hmm. You have a uh, Nicola Payne coming back into the team. She has been doing well in a new club in the US. She moved to the US on loan from uh, from PSG and she has been playing regularly. So I think she probably will play on the right uh, left back of the of the defense. So uh, the new lady that we come in as a replacement for Plumter, uh, talking about uh, Jumoke Alani, mm-hmm. I think she might make do with a place on the bench. So talking about the Bayana Bayana too, they have a lot of uh, some injury worries too. They are number one goalkeeper, Lamini, we missed the game through injury. Well, uh, the, the build up is on to the game. I think the South Africans have a little edge over the Super Falcons based on the fact that they have like 17 local players in their team and they set up camp in Pretoria last week for the game. For the Super Falcons, probably they have like two, three days to prepare, prepare for the game because you have a lot of foreign based players in the team, just few local stars in the team. Hmm. So, the, what you're saying in essence is if you fail to prepare, you prepare to uh, fail or what? Well, uh, international football is quite different from club football. You know, most of these ladies, just like you have with the men's team, they've been together for a long time. Hmm. So, it's not as if they are just putting them together for the game. They've been playing together for for a long time. So the key thing for them is just to acclimatize. Mm-hmm. Like you have like three, four days before the the first leg. So blending is not the issue here. Just for them to acclimatize and get set for the game. Okay, so what's your prediction as regards to this game? Well I think uh, the two sides they have quality players in attack. From what we saw in the last game between Super Falcons and Cameroon, they created a lot of chances, especially in the first half, yes. but they couldn't convert it. This time around, they are facing a more deadlier team in the reigning African champions. Yeah. That's Bayana Bayana. So I think the, the chances will come. 
but they need to put it away. Then the defense too must be up to the task because if you are facing somebody like a Tembi Klaklana, mm. that is the, the, the main force in this South African team. You have to be up and doing. You have to be up to your best. Mm. So definitely we wish uh, the Super Falcons of Nigeria the very best as far as their quest for the 2024 Olympics in Paris is concerned. So let's go to the uh, you know the African secondary competition that's the CAF Confederations Cup. You know, Rivers United playing host to the defending champions USMOJ and well they defeated them by go to nil in the first 10 minutes of the game you know uh, uh augustine okay actually scored uh what was a beautiful uh go out there even though the the the, the reverse united sally guman's boys actually created so many opportunities and they didn't utilize these uh, opportunities do you think it's going to affect them whenever they want to play against the this side in the second leg? well i, I don't think they stand a chance of making it to the semi-finals because when you play against the North Africans, you play them at home, you need to utilize all your chances. Because these guys, when they get back to to play in front of their fans, you can expect them to go full throat, to use everything they can. You understand? I think Rivers United have all the advantage in the first leg. These guys, they were observing the Ramadan fasting. The game was played 2 p.m. in the afternoon, but they couldn't make use of that. Scoring a single goal is not a good uh, sign of a side that want to go all the way in the, in the competition. So, personally, I think they will just be far on by the audience in the second league, in the and, and do you think it's quite going to be you know, possible in a situation where these guys, because the second leg also will still be within the months within the holy months of Ramadan. So, do you think it's still going to you know, play a part in the in the in the momentum of the uh north african side well, i don't think it will play a big part because the, the game is going to be played seven pm in the evening in okay. all years so you can expect them to probably have break their fast mm -hmm. then make use of the cold weather too mm -hmm. in all years against rivers united they had the advantage in the first leg in wheel harsh weather condition in wheel we all know how difficult the weather is yes, in Nigeria at the moment. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. at least they have every chance to have scored at least three, four goals a day, but they couldn't utilize it. So let's go over to Europe. Uh, Arsenal and Manchester City actually played on Sunday, and the game before then was Liverpool Brighton, which Liverpool obviously won by two goals uh, to one. Then Arsenal played out a goalless draw against uh, Manchester City, giving Liverpool that edge to go up top with two points ahead of us, nine, three points ahead of Manchester City in the Premier League title race. With nine games, you know, remaining to, you know, to the end of the season, you know, so many thoughts have been, you know, wagging around, you know, these three teams, you know, three or three something like So, from your own perspective, do you think this advantage that Liverpool have at the moment, they are going to utilize it, considering the fact that they are injured players are actually coming back gradually into the fold? Well, uh, it's still difficult for anybody to really stick at his neck on which of the three teams that will win the title at this stage. I think Arsenal really did well against uh, Man City, which shows uh, they learned a lot from uh, their experience season. last season. And when you have someone like, you have someone like Declan Rice in your team, he has really added that solidity yeah. in the midfield. His experience, despite his uh, young age, is really helping the team. So, coming out of FTR with a point is a good one for... I think they really came uh, with the mentality of picking a draw mm -hmm. from the game. At least, let's keep the whole thing tight at this stage. Yes. If you can go to against the smaller teams and gain points, that will be fine. So, for Liverpool, they are two points ahead, but... The, the, the race is still far from, from, over. from over. Just like you said, nine games to the end of the season. It's everything we bother us down on your mentality as a team, depth in the team, mm -hmm. and how ready you are to go for the title. Definitely. Whether it's a three or three, two or three, or a one or three before the end of the season, definitely one team will be crowned the 2023 2024 English Premier League champions come 
me. Thank you very much, Aboy, for the insightful mm-hmm. analysis. So, viewers, this is where we'll be drawing the curtain as far as uh, this week's episode is concerned. Do take care of yourself and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.